good morning. Just finished my walk in the rain. Yeah, back in the rain. It's all good though. And uh, it's peaceful out. And it the power is out. Now, we have power. Um, I don't know why, uh, but I did this three and a half mile walk. Um, I call it my walk around the block. And uh, about half of it is uphill and about a quarter of it's downhill and the rest of it's flat. Anyway, it kind of goes through the three intersections of our town, which have no lights. We don't have a light in our town. Um, and all the power's out. You know, all the stores, every, everything, uh, it's all out. So I can record all this because um, I can, but um, I can't upload it until we have power. So that's the way that goes. Anyway, well, I was out walking this morning. You know, I've been thinking, uh, you know, yesterday I had an interesting opportunity. And um, I was riding uh, the bus up to uh, our little town, Belfair, where I go walking in the tide flats in the afternoon in the sunshine. And there was this woman on the bus, um, you know, has a uh, shopping cart, push cart, and, you know, middle-aged, whatever. And uh, so I'm talking to the bus driver. He's kind of a friend, and we talk a lot. And... Uh, Anyway, this woman, um, she starts talking and she goes, well, I know, and it, you know, we were talking about the weather, I think. And she goes, well, I always know when it's going to rain. And, and I looked over and she has an umbrella stuck in her shopping cart. And I said, why? Because you carry an umbrella? And she goes, no, it's because of my arthritis. Because as soon as my, you know, I can tell my arthritis will... I'll just start being in all this pain, and then uh, and then it'll start raining. And I said, you know, I used to have arthritis myself, but I cured it all. It's all gone now. And she goes, really? How did you do that? And I said, you're in therapy. I just started drinking my own pee. And she just turned to disgust and, and like, you know, tried to just cut it all off and whatnot. And I said, hey, listen, I'm just telling you what I experienced. It's the truth, you know, and... You know, you don't want to hear it, I don't, you know, I don't care. And so, and then she starts to go on and tell me, you know, starts telling about how all these healthy choices she makes, you know, that, uh, you know, she's no, no longer eats this or that. And she looks for natural and organic and gluten free. And, you know, she goes down this whole laundry list of things that she's doing. And, and so then I just said, uh, but you're still in pain. Uh, is that right? She goes, yeah. I said, huh. Funny how that works. So, all of a sudden, she shifted. And we started having a little bit more of an open dialogue. And I started explaining to her the truth, which is easy to do when you do your homework and do your research and find out what's so about urine and realize there's nothing disgusting or shameful or icky or anything about it. It's beautiful. And when you understand how beautiful it is and you just get past that... Uh, brainwashing that says it's disgusting because that's all it is is brainwashing and uh, you'll be free you'll be so free when you drink your pee it's amazing you'll be free of pain you'll be free of uh, doubts you'll be free of all sorts of things it just shifts the paradigm it changes everything and you know for me I have been seeking truth most of my life I I, I you know, I was just a kid, you know, when I watched the first murder on TV, you know, with uh, with uh, Lee Harvey Oswald. And, um, you know, I've been looking for the truth my whole life. And I realized as time went on, I kept searching more and more and doing more homework, more research, and really started digging deeper and deeper and realizing that basically I've spent a whole lifetime being lied to. You know, in the educational system, in the medical departments, in the science field, like, you know, you take science. Science is a lot of mathematical probabilities, a lot of theoretical possibilities, a lot of, uh, you know, hypothesis, you know, and, and, and somehow it just gets uh, fermented in truth when it's actually theoretical. It's not truth at all. It has no reason in truth. It just has reason in theory. And so, you know, I'm not any kind of conspiratorial theorist. I, I, I believe that there is a lot of conspiracy going on, and it's not theory. It's just not. that We're just being lied to, horrifically, quite frankly. 
And so it is no wonder, you know, that we're being lied to about our own urine. You know, it, it just as much as we're being lied to about 9-11 and Kennedy's death and the wars that we're in and, you know, the educational system, the medical profession, you name it, you know, we've been lied to. History books full of lies. Science books full of lies. And, you know, at some point you either got to like decide that's not for you, that you're going to go further. And that's why I think it's important. See, I'm willing to speak the truth about urine because I understand it. I do, I do a lot of research and more importantly, I'm experiential. That's the, you know, that's the critical part is being experiential. I can speak the truth about it because I know what's going on with me. I can feel it. I can see it. I know what's going on. And you know what? I love it. <laughs> it's awesome. Life is really, really good, you know. So anyway, this woman ended up taking my card, you know. Uh, she said, you know, I said, hey, you know, just do some research. And I said, you know, you go to my YouTube channel. There's a, I produce a show every day and I talk about a lot of things. And I also have lots and lots of files of other people that have walked before me that have you know, given their own testimonials and uh, shows all sorts of uh, insights and research. So um, I thought that was pretty cool. And I, the reason I mention all this is because I'm just not willing to uh, beat around the bush. You know, I just speak the truth with people because uh, why not? Huh? You know, what What have I got to lose? You know, what? they're, they're not going to think I'm cool or <laughs> they and I won't get to sit at the cool table, you know, or what you know what what's the deal you know i i just live in my truth and um so i uh, ran in i went and uh, said hi to another friend of mine who runs a, he's a manager of a store and he's been going through some things and i went in to check on him and stuff and he says yesterday he, he tells me i'm doing a lot better today yesterday man i was just like miserable with my allergies and you know da 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 and so i i made like kind of an indicator of like pissing into a shooter glass and taking a shot i said dude give it a whirl it'll clear it up in no time you know and he looks at me and i said you know i don't know what part you're missing here dude people look at me like i'm crazy because i drink pee and i look at people like they're crazy because they don't so <laughs> just is what it is you know and i don't care it's up to you you know you want to go ahead and uh, you know your story is your misery hey you know a lot of people like that you know, so it gives them substance, it, it validates them, you know, so they're going to make sure they're always miserable and in pain and, and complaining because otherwise they'll have no existence. Nobody will understand, you know, how fucked up their lives are and why they're such a mess. And it's not because of their fault. It's nothing they did. No, never is. It's always because of something else. Always, you know, huh. well, too bad. The responsibility always lies upon ourselves. Period. No one to blame. No one. So, um, yeah, anyway, I thought I'd share all that. I just think that uh, it's important if you're doing this, you know, own it. That's all. You know, there's no sense being in the closet about it and acting like there's something disgusting or shameful about it. You know, that it's like until you step out through that door, you'll never be free. It's like people coming out that are, you know, transgender or gay or anything else, you know, just like be authentic, be genuine, own your shit, whatever it is, just own it. And um, you'll feel better. I guarantee you'll feel better. You'll be happier. You'll feel freer. You don't feel like you're hiding and uh, stuck in some cage somewhere. And uh, we're the only ones that can lock ourselves up and be the jailer. And we have the key to set ourselves free. And urine is just one way to do it. <laughs> I think it's the best way, personally. But, you know, it's an option. So, um, that's what I want to say about that. And um, I got another poem for you today. And this one is, um, this one's entitled, I Hold a Vision. So, um, I Hold a Vision. A dream, if you will. I've held it a long time and it lives with me still. Its foundation is patience. 
a virtue well earned. No shortage of repeats of lessons I've learned. Perseverance. Just hold on to your dreams. Don't let the world unravel your seams. Just keep perspective. Your point of view. Perspective on anything that affects you. How do you see yourself? How could you be? Does your heart have a song that yearns to be free? What will it take to unlock the door to experience joy and becoming much more? And there it is. So hopefully uh, we'll get some power here soon um, so that we, well, we have power, I mean, but the rest of the town because uh, we're not getting any internet. We're not getting anything until the power goes back on. So anyway, I'll do all the uploading when that happens. And uh, in the meantime, I hope you all have a beautiful, wonderful, marvelous day. And uh, I'm sending you good vibes and love and peace be with you. And boom, ah, you just been loved. Ha <laughs> ha.